Good morning everybody, my name is Urs Fischer, I'm Secretary General of the European Stroke Organization and I'm here at the fourth European Stroke Organization conference in Gothenburg. I have a special guest today, it's Professor Ken Butcher, he is Professor for Stroke Medicine at the University of Alberta. He uh, was presenting a major trial this morning at the uh, trial session, uh, he presented the results of the data trial. Congratulations for this great achievement. Could you please give us a brief background of the trial? Oh, thanks very much. Um, DATUS2 um, is really part of a, a larger concept um, aimed at proving ultimately uh, the approach of anticoagulating um, undifferentiated acute uh, TI and minor stroke patients uh, with the goal of preventing early recurrent stroke, particularly within 30 days of index symptom onset. Um, the first step, of course, was to prove the safety of that approach because it's a, quite a departure up to now. And even in today, we heard results uh, from the point trial, um, efforts at early um, recurrent stroke prevention have really focused on antiplatelet strategies, either novel antiplatelets or combinations, dual antiplatelet therapy. Uh, but we know that will not be sufficient to prevent certain types of stroke, particularly cardioembolic stroke, which must represent a, a significant proportion, probably at least 20% of patients with recurrent ischemic stroke. Uh, and those patients are ideally treated with an anticoagulant, even though you haven't diagnosed occult paroxysmal atrial fibrillation or other sources of uh, recurrent thromboembolic stroke. Um, so DATUS-2 was designed specifically to assess the safety of using a novel oral anticoagulant in the acute stroke setting. Um, as there are no data uh, with respect to using those drugs in that trial setting. As you well know, the evidence for anticoagulation in acute stroke with older anticoagulants is not good. Uh, and in fact, current recommendations are not to anticoagulate due to excess um, hemorrhagic transformation rates associated with the older anticoagulants like unfractionated and low molecular weight heparin. For us, stroke physicians, that's a very important unanswered question, and we are very happy that you were addressing this uh, question in the uh, data uh, trial. What were the inclusion exclusion criteria of patients included in, uh, in your trial? So patients uh, had to have an acute cerebrovascular syndrome presentation, so it could be transient ischemic attack or minor stroke, and the inclusion criteria were an NIH stroke scale sc score of 0 to 9, um, and we had to randomize patients within 72 hours of index symptom onset. All patients had to have an MRI prior to randomization, and that MRI uh, was assessed by investigators who looked specifically at the diffusion-weighted image, and they excluded patients with DWI lesions that were greater than 25 mils, just estimated using the ABCD2 uh, formula. Um, so it's a, we ended up with a high-risk minor stroke TIA population. Okay, were well, patients with atrial fibrillation or uh, ca cardioembolic stroke an inclusion uh, criteria? So specific uh, exclusion criteria were any indication or contraindication for oral anticoagulation, so that would in include all patients with atrial fibrillation. They were not uh, included. Any patient who required revascularization, so carotid endarterectomy or stent, was also excluded. But anybody with large artery disease, um, either intracranial or extracranial, that was not um, considered an indication for surgery was eligible. And one in four of our patients actually did have evidence of large artery atherosclerotic changes, both intracranially and extracranially. So uh, I'm very keen to uh, know the results. Could you please explain what your findings so our primary endpoint was symptomatic hemorrhagic transformation, which we defined as a parenchymal hemorrhage type 2, that is uh, blood into the original infarct occupying more than 30% of that original infarct volume, associated with clinical deterioration, which we uh, defined as an increase in the NIH stroke scale score of four points or more. Uh, and occurring within five weeks of randomization, which included the entire 30-day 
treatment period as well as one additional week. Um, and the primary endpoint occurred in exactly zero patients treated with dabigatran and exactly zero patients treated with aspirin, which obviously simplifies the uh, statistical analysis. There was no change. And in fact, we saw no parenchymal hematomas in either group. Uh, for us as clinicians, that's very reassuring. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the efficacy? Uh, I know that the trial was not powered to address these questions, but do you have any hints whether uh, early treatment with dabigatran uh, is also superior to aspirin. Yeah, so we, we were obviously, although as you say, we weren't powered for that endpoint, we were hoping, of course, to show some signal uh, which would uh, drive interest in a further trial. And there were uh, numerically fewer events, uh, recurrent ischemic lesions on the day 30 scan seen either on DWI or FLARE in patients treated with dabigatran versus those treated with aspirin. Um, the the uh, difference in events was nine in the um, dabigatran group and 14 in the aspirin group. Um, this did not translate into a significant uh, reduction in the relative risk, uh, but the point estimate is going the right way at 64%. We also heard the results of the Navigate thesis trial today. Mm -hmm. Um, what is your interpretation of your trial in the light of the Navigate thesis trial? Um, I, I view our approach uh, and our trial to be intermediate between the Navigate trial and the point trial. Um, so the, I think it's very clear that the longer you're on uh, more aggressive antithrombotic therapy, whether that be combination antiplatelet therapy or an oral anticoagulant, the greater your risk of hemorrhagic complications. Um, Navigate was, was disappointing, uh, but it's, it's looking at a very different population over a much ex more extended time period. Um, and I don't think it closes the door at all to short-term anticoagulation. Um, and, and I think the results of the point trial show us that you can reduce recurrent stroke rates, but combination antiplatelet therapy is also not without risk. And in fact, you could argue that its risks are higher than that for which we saw with dabigatran uh, with respect to bleeding complications uh, over that short period of time. Um, so I, I still think there is um, there, there is room uh, to test this theory. Um, another key difference um, between our trial and the Navigate ESUS trial is, of course, we didn't select patients uh, on the infarct pattern. Uh, we took all comers. And it's, it's actually going to be one of the more interesting uh, secondary papers that comes out of our study is we saw patients on MRI who you might look at and say that's a lacunar pattern of infarction uh, but as you see in some of our examples they then later have another uh, a recurrent stroke which has an embolic pattern and I, I think perhaps our um, approach to dividing um, infarcts, infarct etiology or, or inferring etiology based on infarct patterns could be oversimplified um, and I do think we perhaps should take a broader uh, brush to our antithrombotic approaches to these patients. These are really exciting news. What are the next steps? What are your plans for the new f near future? Should well, we uh, start a short uh, time period uh, study on efficacy or what are the next steps? We ultimately would like to pursue anticoagulation. Um, I think it's, it's very clear today that the current treatment guidelines are going to change. That's something that we're going to have to deal with. The standard of care up until now has been monotherapy, generally aspirin. I think after today, the standard of care is now going to be dual antiplatelet therapy, in my opinion, probably for 30 days, not 90 days. So that will now become the control group. And everything we compare to will have to do better than dual antiplatelet therapy in terms of recurrent stroke over that short time period. But we would like to pursue uh, a trial. We think we've shown very good safety data with, with dabigatran, um, but uh, arguably you could pursue this with any of the novel oral anticoagulants, but the data we have to date is with uh, dabigatran. 
Again, congratulations for this really great achievement. We uh, are very happy that you presented the data here at ESOC in Europe. And uh, I thank you for coming for this uh, interview. Thank you very much for the opportunity.